Hello and welcome to another in a series of technology-focused tips brought to you by K2 Enterprises. My name is Tommy Stevens and it will be my privilege to lead you through this introduction to dynamic array formulas in Excel. Now as we get started, please notice that this tip is just as its name implies, that is, it is an introduction to dynamic arrays in Excel. We will have numerous follow-up videos going into a great detail on many of the things that we share in this very short introduction, so please be sure to check back often for updates. Without further ado, let's get started. Maybe a good thing to consider is, first off, what is an array? At the risk of oversimplifying, I think we can safely say that an array inside an Excel spreadsheet in particular is simply a range of cells. Now that range of cells could be just simply a row of cells, it could be a column, or it could be a row and column environment. For example, the range of data that just appeared on the screen, we can safely consider that to be an array. Now it's important to understand as we talk about arrays that historically there have been various types of, let's call them array formulas that we could have applied to an array. And an array formula is simply a formula that performs one or more calculations upon one or more items inside an array. Don't let this sound too complicated. It's actually quite simple. And the good news is, with some of the developments that we're going to share with you in this tip, it gets simpler still. Historically, most, but not all, of our array formulas required entering Control, Shift, and Enter at the end of the formula sequence in order to complete the formula. Now this stands, of course, in stark contrast to most traditional Excel formulas where we simply press the Enter key to accept the input. Of course, there were some exceptions to this rule. Uh, one of those most notable exceptions was the sum product function. The sum product function, even though it operated on an array and it acted as if it was a much more sophisticated array formula, the sum product or array function, I should say, the sum product function did not require in, uh, pressing Control Shift and Enter to complete the formula. So. It's safe to say then that arrays and array formulas are certainly not new in Excel. They are a long-standing feature of Excel. With that said, the natural question then is, what is new? In late 2018, Microsoft announced something known as dynamic arrays for users of Excel provided through Office 365 subscriptions. Now let me pause. The emphasis here, a very key point of emphasis that I want to make is understand that at least presently, in order to gain the new functionality, you are going to have to be an Office 365 subscriber. This is not available in Excel 2019 or prior. With these dynamic arrays, any formula that returns an array of values will automatically spill those values into unoccupied cells, and that's going to make it very easy for us to work with this data. And you'll see a very a good and, and relevant example of that momentarily. So one of the greatest benefits that we're going to have working with dynamic arrays and several related functions built around the concept of dynamic arrays is simplification of otherwise what could be very complicated uh, formula sequences inside Excel. Now, in addition to the concept of the dynamic array, we have seven new dynamic array functions that have recently been added. And this, again, will greatly simplify the process of working with our dynamic arrays. These seven new dynamic array functions include filter, which, as its name implies, allows you to filter a range of data based on criteria that you define. And let's keep in mind that this is going to be a formula-based filter. This is not going to be a traditional filter that we apply to our data by clicking a drop-down arrow at the top of the range. No, this type of, of filter will be done via a formula. There's the new unique function. And the unique function, again, as a formula, will return a list of unique values in a list or a range. There is the sort function, which as its name implies, will sort the contents of a range or an array, and it will do so once again based on the presence of a formula, not by clicking a drop-down arrow at the top of a column. There's the sort by function. This will sort based on the values in a corresponding range or array, similar to sort, but with some subtle differences. 
There's the new sequence function, which will allow you to generate a list of sequential numbers in an array, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so on and so forth. The sixth new function is that of single, and the single function will return a single value that's at the intersection of a cell's row or column. And then the seventh and final function is the rand array function. The rand array function is there to return an array of random numbers between 0 and 1. As mentioned previously, this new functionality will roll out to Office 365 users throughout the remainder of 2019 and into 2020. So if you are an Office 365 subscriber and you do not yet have access to this functionality, don't despair. It is coming. Uh, it might, depending upon your update cadence within Office 365, take a little bit of time to get to you. Now, as mentioned previously, this tip is provided as an introduction into this new functionality. We're not going to go into great details here, but I do think it is important that we see an example of what a dynamic array and a dynamic array function look like, just so you can begin to gain an appreciation for the, for the uh, powerful nature of this new feature. Now, as you can tell, I've just toggled over to an Excel workbook, more specifically a specific worksheet within that workbook. And here we have some sales data across the months of January, February, and March, and that data has been totaled. Uh, it is important to note that I have converted the range of data that you're currently looking at on your screen into a table, although it is not a necessity to do that in order to work with dynamic arrays. To begin to show you the power of working with this dynamic array, I'm first going to copy the column headers from our source data and just begin depositing those as column headers beginning in column G through column K. We'll widen out those columns. I will then next click inside cell G2. Let's suppose that we wanted to sort this data based on total sales. And we wanted the data, our original data set currently residing in cells A1 through E21, we want it to remain unchanged. That is, we want to create a report that sorts the data based on the total column without disturbing the original data. Because I now have access to dynamic arrays, I can do that. More specifically, to make that happen, I will use the sort function. Now remember, sort is one of these seven new dynamic array functions that uh, have been added to Excel, provided through an Office 365 subscription. And I will tell Excel that I want to sort the table, otherwise known as data. I'd given that, uh, that table of, of data. I'd given it the name data previously. And I want to sort that based on the fifth column of data. Now remember, we want to sort this based on the total column, and so counting from left to right, A is column 1, B is column 2, C is column 3, D is column 4, and finally E is column 5. So I want to sort it based on the fifth column, and I want to sort this in ascending or descending order is the last, uh, last item that I'm being asked to enter. And let's say that I want to perhaps sort that in descending order and then I'll simply close the formula and watch what happens. First off, I'm not pressing Control shift enter Secondly, simply pressing Enter causes that entire range of data to be sorted based on the values in column K, but also notice that how all of the data spilled into this new array. Now what's kind of interesting about this is see that our original data set remain unchanged. So any formulas, any pivot tables, anything that I've been doing with that original data set remains undisturbed, notwithstanding the fact that I have now created effectively a replica of that original data set and sorted the replica. If I repeat that process, let's copy these column headers, jump out to column M for example, And now let's go in and say that we want to basically do the same thing again. That is, I want to sort the data from the array that carries the name data. And I want to sort it once again based on the, well, let's in this case say we want it sorted based on the fourth column. That is the data for the month of March. And I want this sorted in ascending order rather than descending order. 
Now pressing enter again, not control shift enter, but just simply enter. And all of that data is now, as you can see, showing up inside my, uh, my newly created array. Now, one of the advantages of using tables as the foundations for our arrays is simply this. If we now have new data that appears, uh, maybe we realize that we had inadvertently left one of our salespeople off the original uh, table, and I add that new data to the bottom of the table. As you likely know, simply typing or pasting data to the row immediately below the table causes the table to expand and automatically include that data. So the moment I press or press tab or enter, see how Hampton has now been added to both of my resulting ranges. And I'll just throw some simple data in for this particular salesperson. And the moment that I do that, notice that as far as sorting on my, my total column, Hampton is now showing up in the middle of that total column without me having to do anything. My report that sorts the data based on the total column immediately picked up Hampton and positioned Hampton in the proper location. But as I look at my uh, data where we're sorting based on the March data and we're sorting in descending order, Hampton, because he or she has the highest value, uh, they are rightfully located on the very last row of this particular um, of this particular array. And remember, that's because we chose to sort that data in ascending order. Now, please understand, we have just barely scratched the surface of dynamic arrays in, in this particular video, in this particular tip. What I wanted to do, to do was give you just a quick introduction to what dynamic arrays are all about, uh, help you understand and, and kind of uh, hopefully whet your appetite a little bit for all that dynamic arrays can do. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to be running a series of videos that uh, show the power of working with dynamic arrays. I hope you'll check back with us again soon uh, for another in a series of of these dynamic array tips. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to check back often and we look forward to serving you again in the very near future.